Okay, so once again, trainers, pathology candidates, welcome to my live class. My name is Dr. Gerald Kenshua, and this is your live class uh, as a guide towards uh, making your TM1 portfolio. Okay, so first and foremost, sa trainers methodology, again, recap tayo. There are six units of competencies. You have your plan training session, maintain training facility, supervised workplace learning, uh, utilize electronic media for learning, facilitate, learn, uh, facilitate learning session, and conduct competency assessment. So, uh, e, um, half of those competencies would require you to submit portfolio. Okay, so this is your guide. Now, in making your portfolio, let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, in making your portfolio, I have here your uh, Google Classroom as your guide. So let's try to run through with it. Okay, so uh, una, pasokin natin si maintain training facility. For those who are done, congratulations. For those who are about to start with their MTF portfolio, so uh, your maintain training facility na portfolio, uh, there are 11 templates or there are 11 forms. Okay, so let's try natin siya. Form number one is what we call your housekeeping schedule. Anong dapat gawin dito? Lahat ng forms ng maintain training facility, please change your header into your school's header. Clear? So meaning kung saan school ka na belong, i-change mo lang yung header na yan, of course. Then housekeeping schedule, retain nyo lang yan. For qualification, of course, you have to change it based on your qualification. It can be food and beverage services and C2, front office and C2, bookkeeping and C3, uh, healthcare services and C2, or beauty care and C2. So it change nyo lang yan. For the areas or section, there are uh, uh, there are um, nine CBT components in your training facility. So one is your practical work area. Another, you have your institutional assessment area. You have your quality control area. You have your trainers area. You have your support area, so on and so forth. So um, lahat ng area na yon gagawan mo siya ng housekeeping schedule. But for TM purposes, gawan, gawa ka lang ng isang housekeeping schedule for that area. So let's try pra practical work area. Okay, then in charge, sino in charge na mag housekeeping mo? It can be janitorial, your general service personnel, your utility, or ikaw mismo trainer. So, nanasa mo ha. Okay, then location, of course, okay, of your training facility. Kung asan po asan banda ang location ng room mo. Then, uh, for the housekeeping schedule, then you, you will make your activities. How to ensure cleanliness orderliness o kali, uh, at saka kalinisan ng, ng training facility mo. So, gagawa ka ng activity niyan. Then, you're going to take or you're going to put an X kung anong schedule niya. Kung everyday ba? Eh, everyday pa or every other day or weekly or every 15 or monthly. Okay? Then, you're going to put your remarks. Okay? Tapos, of course, sa footer or sa last part, you have to revert, you have to change this one into your Pangalan. So, pangalan mo na ilalagay mo dito as trainer, then approved by who will be your school head. Okay? So, klaro for the Form 1. Now, for the Form 2, here's your Form 2. Si Form 2 naman is what we call your Equipment Maintenance Schedule. Si Equipment Maintenance Schedule, it is more on how you maintain yung equipo or yung materials mo sa training facility or sa training room mo. So for example, uh, sa bookkeeping and C3, they have calculator. So ilalagay mo dyan, equipment type, calculator. Uh, anong equipment code? So nasa, nasa label na yan or nasa carton na yan ng, ng equipment mo or nasa tag. Then anong location? Then anong month mo gagawa, gagawa ng schedule yon Then you're going to, likewise with Form 1, gagawa mo siya ng activity. How to maintain? Are you going to uh, clean the wirings, are you going to fix the paraphernalia or etc. or are you going to change the battery so maganon then then the frequency kung daily ba every other day weekly every 15th or monthly okay then likewise a footer change mo din yung footer so ganun lang kadali si form number two now for pagdating sa form number three 
eto ang form number 3, eto na yung counter checking or the checklist ng form number 1. So ibig sabihin kung ilan yung activities ng form number 1 mo, dapat pareho sa activities ng form number 3. Gets? So ulitin ko, balikan natin si form number 1. So kung ito yung housekeeping schedule mo for form number 1, so kung il, kung ano yung activities mo dito sa sa form number 1 at kung ilan yan lahat, copy paste them, then put it sa form number 3. Dapat magkapareho. Kasi checklist nga ito eh. So of course, pagdating sa form number 3, checklist siya, it's a check na, it's a check mo na yan na, na, as the trainer kung nagagawa ba or nalilinis ba ng utility mo. Okay, so again, change the header and change the footer. Let's go to form number four. Si form number four, uh, checklist din ito siya ni form number two mo kanina. Okay, so kung again, kung ilan naman yung activities mo sa form number two, dapat mag-jive siya dito sa activities ng form number four mo kasi checklist ito. Okay, so that's it. So yun lang, again, ulitin ko, form number one, and form number 3, dapat magkapareho ng activities, mag-jive siya. Form number 2 and form number 4, dapat mag-jive din siya. Clear. Okay, so let's go to form number 5. Here is your equipment record. So equipment record, parang inventory lang ito siya, inventory report. Okay, I'm sure sa, sa mga school ninyo or sa institution ninyo, uh, you have, although you're not the one making it, um, but you have your equipment record or your inventory. So, ito lang yung equipment record natin, uh, particular sa ating classroom or sa ating training room. So, lista mo lang kung ano yung mga equipment record sa training room mo. Next, form number six. <clears throat> si form number six is your tag out bill. So, meaning, ito yung mga... Uh, mga hazardous na mga tag labels for safety. For example, meron kang chair na sira, so gagawin mo ng tag out bill yun. So pwede mo lagyan na ano, uh, do not use, out of order, or caution, slippery when wet, or unauthorized person, keep out, or high voltage, do not touch, mga ganon. So those are your tag out bills. So lista mo lang yan siya dyan because this will be your tag out record. Okay, so that's form number six. Form number seven is your waste management. So waste management naman na list, sulat mo lahat kung ano yung type of waste mo. Kung meron kang paper, stapler, uh, meron kang glass, or meron kang uh, mga broom, or any waste na, uh, that is found in your training facility, lista mo dyan. Then you're going to tick if you're going, how, how are you going to segregate or dispose it? Kung i-recycle mo ba siya, or i-compose mo siya, or i-dispose mo siya. So again, for the header and the footer, change mo na lang yan into your own name and your school's name. Next, form number eight is your breakdown report. So si breakdown report, parang ano, parang list of equipment yan siya na malfunctioning. So meaning sila or hindi na, hindi na nagpa-function. So for example, sa practical work area mo banda, ano-ano yung mga gamit or mga materials mo sa classroom mo na hindi na gumagana o sira. So sulat mo dyan. Tapos what will be your recommendation kung for disposal, for repair, for send out sa uh, send, send out sa manufacturing company or whatever. Okay? So next, let's try form number nine. Of course, so kung si form number eight, gumawa ka na ng, may record ka na ng mga sira mo na training facility. So pagdating kay form number nine, you're going to work, you're going to make a work request. So kung for repair ba siya, for send out ba siya, gagawin mo siya ng work request para maging, para maayos yung, yung equipment mo. So this is your work request. So ano yung type of equipment na, na i-request mo? Tapos ano yung mga mga observation like kung may crack ba na glass or kung meron bang ninatngat ba yung wirings or uh, natunaw ba yung battery ano niya, lithium or whatever. So, of course, you have to affix your signature there. Next, form number 10 is your salvage report. Si salvage report, parang breakdown report lang yan. Pero ang kaibahan lang niya, nila ni breakdown report, si breakdown report, kompleto siya ng mga list of equipment na damage. Unlike with salvage report, Kung sino lang yung particular na na equipment na na for send out, yun yung gagawin mo. That's it. Uh, and last form is your inspection report. So yung inspection report, um, 
uh, as a trainer after mag for example si lend out mo yung equipment mo na na for repair or for disposal so i check mo ngayon kung i counter check mo ngayon kung tama ba kung na send out na ba asa na ba so this is how your inspection report looks like Okay, so again, this that is your portfolio for your maintain, train, maintain training facility. Actually, madali lang ito siya. You have to accomplish once you finish your 11 forms. Again, pag magtabaho kayo for, for your MTF portfolio, change the header into your school header. Tapos your portfolio, change it into your name. Tapos i-edit nyo na lang itong mga 11 forms. Then you're done. After nyan, tapos ka na si MTF. Ganun lang siya kadali. Okay, so that's it. Any question for MPF? Tapos, sir, salamat po. Kaayaw. Thank you, Kaisa. Clear? Klaro? Opo, sir. Sige, okay. Now, after your MPF portfolio, let's go to your... um. Let's go to your... Uh, supervised work-based learning portfolio. For supervised work-based learning, ito yung unit of competency kung saan we supervise or we monitor your students' progress. Uh, monitor natin sila kung natutuo, kung natututo ba sila sa class or even sa OGTs, kumusta ang ginag anong kumusta or anong ginagawa nila sa industry. So, ito yung unit of competency na yun. So, for, for your supervised work-based learning, similar lang siya sa, may mga similarities siya na forms or template with your plan training session. So, um, ito, for first form, you have your form 4.1. Uh, you can also find this one sa plan training session na module. So, ito, ito lang yan siya. Parang uh, ginapa-fill up lang natin to sa studyante or sa trainee just to I just to help us identify kung anong type of learner sila so kung magaling ba sila sa math medyo magaling ba sila sa english ano ba ang culture nila kasi baka magtuturo tayo ng bisaya eh, hindi pala sila marunong magbisaya ano yung educational attainment nila and of course and of course kung meron ba silang mga prior knowledge sa bookkeeping or prior knowledge sa first sa food and beverage or meron ba sila mga prior experiences sa beauty care. Okay, so ginapa-fill up natin to sila sa form na ito. Okay, so that's it. Next na form is gagawa tayo ng training activity matrix. Sa training activity matrix naman, ito yung ano um <clears throat> since we are using or we are we are uh, using CBT or competency based training sa TESDA. Meaning ibig sabihin niyan, ah uh, Kung meron kang 25 na estudyante, sabay-sabay yan sila natututo on different module. For example, you have 5 out of your 25 na student, may 5 student ka nasa module 1. Ang second 5 mo na student, nasa module 2. Ang third, moon, third, third batch of your student, nasa module 3. Ang fourth batch mo, nasa module 4. So sabay-sabay yan sila. So how can you monitor na, ala, kumusta kaya ito si Sir Don? An asang module na kaya ito siya? Or ito si Ma'am Sheba, nasa module 3, kumusta na kaya ito? Or si Sir Ray, nasa module 3 siya, ano na kaya? Basi, baka, uh, baka nahihirapan na ito siya. So using your training activity matrix, you can easily monitor your student kung nasa ang module na siya. So for example, your training matrix, Training, matri training activity matrix, for example, sa healthcare services and C2. So, in your in your unit of competency, uh, in your for example, in your unit of competency, sino ang mga student mo under doon sa competency na yun or sa module na yun? So, in this case, makita mo siya kaagad na, ah, okay, nasa unit competency, LO1 pala itong limang studyante ko. So, then what are their materials na ginagamit? Kung may PC internet ba, o tapos nasa ang area sila, nagpa-practice, and anong date sila nagpa-practice. So in this case, ma-monitor mo talaga sila na o si Miss Alves or si Miss Cagas nandun pala sa practical work area station 1 and they are preparing to assist with patient mobility. Next batch na student ko, nasa, nasa module 3, LO2 sila, ito naman yung mga names of students. So ma-monitor ko sila even if, even if nasa, nasa table lang ako, ma-monitor ma ko sila individually. So, ang gagawin ko na lang, supervise ko na lang during their, their demonstration. Okay? So, that's it. Question for your supervise, your maintain training, uh, your training activity matrix. Wala po, sir. Wala. Sige. Okay. So, next na form is your, uh, next na form is your 
uh, form 4.2 or your self-assessment check. Si self-assessment check naman, um, eto naman siya, kasama nung learner's characteristic kanina to identify kung anong klaseng student meron tayo, pinapafill up din natin to sa kanila, self-assessment check. So, um, under your competency, for example, bookkeeping NC3. So, sa bookkeeping NC3, merong five competencies dyan. So, uh, sulat mo lang dito ano yung mga competencies at saka learning outcome dito sa blank. For example, in your core competency one, that's journalized transaction, may mga learning outcomes ka sa ilalim niyan. Under, uh, makikita niyo sa training regulation ninyo mamaya sa TESDA. Okay? Core number two mo, sulat mo dyan with your learning outcome hanggang sa makompleto mo yan. Now, pag fill up ng bata nito, sasabihin, sa instruction mo, please check the following, please check the following, ano, ah, uh, or competencies or learning outcome kung alin dito yung alam mo nang gawin. So pag mag-check siya ng no dyan, ibig sabihin, yan yung learning material na gagawan mo. Yan yung CBLM or module na gagawan mo para sa kanya kasi hindi niya pa alam. Pero pag nag-check siya dyan ng yes, for example, sasabihin niya na um, beauty care, NC, NC2 siya. Um, ma or sir, marunong na ako mag-perform mag, mag na ng nail polishing. So, naka-yes siya. Validate mo na lang. Sabihin mo, sige, validate natin kung marunong ka talaga. Can you, can you present to me your certificate or any proof na, na competent ka talaga sa skill na yan? Okay? So, yan yung self-assessment check. Question? Wala? Yes, okay, under also with your supervised workplace learning, you will have your attendance monitoring. Kasi sa supervised, syempre, mag supervise ka ng studyante mo, you will be having your attendance. Okay, so check mo na lang. Uh, ang role natin dito as, as trainer sa TESDA, hindi na tayo yung ano, traditional type na magle-lesson ka, one-on-one, -one, blah, 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 etc., etc. Supervise ka lang talaga, magpa-facilitate ka lang ng, ng session, mag-facilitate ka lang ng learning session. So, prepare your attendance sheet as well. So, for sure, as trainers or as teachers, uh, alaman natin paano mag-fill up ng attendance sheet. So, this is your format. Next, okay. So, pre-test and post-test. So, my question kanina, is it required na gagawa kami ng pre-test or post-test sa supervise? Yes, because your pre-test will help you gauge the knowledge of your student before you conduct the training. So, meaning, bago mo, is, bago mo, bago mo sisimulan yung klase mo, of course, you have to evaluate kung gaano, kung gaano kalawak yung knowledge ng studyante mo. Then, after your lesson, magpo-post test ka naman para ma-compare mo na may natutunan ba itong studyante sa klase ko or wala. Kasi makita mo man yan. For example, sa pre-test niya, ang score niya is 1. Pagdating ng post-test, kapag 1 pa rin or 0 ang score niya, ibig sabihin wala siya natutunan sa klase mo. Okay? So you can easily evaluate or compare. That's why you will be needing your pre-test and post-test. Pre-test, same lang din ang questions sa post-test. Para kasi kung babaguhin mo siya, iibahin mo yung question, hindi mo siya mag-gauge, hindi mo siya ma-compare. Kasi, kasi iba naman ang question. Sige, now let's go to your competency-based training or CBT. So here is a sample of your PowerPoint. Later, pag mag- Pag mag-demo na kayo for facility learning session, you will be needing this. Okay, so competency-based training, kung si DepEd, ang ginagamit niya na modality is performance-based education. Kung si CHED naman, ang, gina ang ginagamit naman na modality is outcome-based education. Si TESDA, ang ginaga ginagamit ni TESDA is CBT or competency-based training. Okay, so klaro yan ha. So for TESDA, we are using competency-based training or CBT. So papaano to? Your competency-based training is an approach to the students given opportunity to learn in their own pace. So ibig sabihin, um, hindi porket uh, late nag-enroll or late nag-start ang studyante sa TESDA, eh, late na siya matututo. No, depende sa case niya yun. May mga studyante na fast learner or fast pacing sila, so mas mabilis sila matapos. May mga student na mas testa na medyo mabagal, so medyo mabagal din ang, ang learning process or learning pacing nila. So, ganon. Okay, so if we if we go, if you are going to compare the traditional versus the, the CBT, 
ang traditional, more on ang traditional kasi, more on giving instruction, di ba? So, sa ched or sa DepEd, uh, when we when we enter the class, sabay-sabay natututo ang studyante, tama? Eh, sabay, i, 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 isang topic lang man ang, 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 ang tinuturo natin in one, in one sitting. So, nagbibigay tayo ng instruction. Okay, class, this is our topic for today. Read chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. So, Ganon, sabay-sabay sila natututo, sabay-sabay sila nabibigyan ng instruction. Unlike with CBT, we are more on managing learning. So, uh, they may not start one module at the same time. As I've said, nagsisimula sila, uh, each, mo, each student uh, is learning on different module at the same time. So, managing learning lang tayo. Uh, more on facilitate, facilitating students uh, learning lang tayo. Tapos, Um, learning ang pagdating naman sa traditional, isang reference or isang uh, uniform lang ang book na ginagamit. So for example, the book is about financial accounting. So more on financial accounting lang talaga ang ang ano ang ang book na gagamitin nila sa traditional. Unlike with CBT, they have a lot. So they can use our module, our CBLM, they can use context ng mga books and etc. Okay, pwedeng mga electronic and etc. Okay, so that's it. Um, another for traditional, si traditional, kung ang um, uh, pag nag-enroll ang student sa traditional, isa lang. For example, month of June, enrollment. June lang talagang papasok. Pag pumasok ka na ng July or August, I don't know kung tinatanggap pa sa, sa school registrar, parang hindi na, di ba? So or late enrollment na. Unlike with TESDA, kapag may nag-enroll ng June, may nag-enroll ng July, may nag-enroll ng August, may nag-enroll ng September, pasok pa rin yan. So meaning they have multiple entry and multiple exit. They can enroll anytime and they can uh, graduate anytime. So ganun tayo sa CBT. Okay? So as mentioned, your uh, role as trainer more on coordination and facilitation lang tayo. Okay? So that's it. Uh, that's our role sa CBT process. Question for CBT. Hello. Yeah, okay. yeah, edit lang po na naman presentation na ra, sir na. Yes, you will. Same lang man, same lang man ako. Ah, you, ano. uh, you will have this one later pag mag pag magdating na kayo sa facilitate learning session na module. Mas pagagandahin pa, pa mas pagagandahin pa natin yung PowerPoint niyo. Okay. So, uh, another for your supervised workplace learning is your evaluation. So, ito evaluation lang po ng ng training session mo or ng program mo. Of course, ipapa-evaluate mo sa student mo kung how, how effective your learning is, how effective ang, imuhang, ay, ang iyong training, ano, training process or, or the session. Tapos, of course, magpapa-evaluate ka rin sa sarili mo as the trainer kung ano, ha, did you establish ano, a trusting atmosphere with your student para, para malaman mo lang uh, and you can have feedback to improve more on your training skill. Then, Um, you also have our progress and achievement chart. So, ang progress chart, usually, lahat ng unit of competencies and learning outcome ng qualification mo, nilalagay natin yan dito. Tapos, lahat ng name ng student mo, you're going to place it here. Now, usually, this progress chart is ano, uh, printed in a tarpaulin format. So, naka-tarpaulin yan, tapos naka-post naka yan sa classroom mo. So that you can monitor, for example, si Abdukay, Abdukahil Ana, anong module na ba siya? So kung nari, tapos na siya sa UC1. So check mo na lang yan. LO1, check mo na yan. LO2, check mo na yan. So meaning, using your progress chart, you can easily monitor in one in one look kung nasa ang, nasa ang part na ang student mo on his, on his or her learning. Okay? Ang kaibahan naman, that's your progress chart. Ang kaibahan naman ni progress chart sa achievement chart, eto. Yung achievement chart naman is kung tapos na siya sa written test niya or sa portfolio or kung anong assessment method ang ni-require mo per module sa kanya, nandito na yung achievement chart. So meaning, for example, si Alves na student, tapos na siya sa UC1 with all the learning outcome. Tapos ni-require mo each learning outcome, ni-require mo ng written test, nakapasa siya lahat, so check mo na yan. Then, saka mo isyuhan ng certificate of completion or certificate of participation. So, in that, in that manner, 
uh, ma-monitor mo siya na, ah, okay, may certificate na pala ito si Alves. So, competent or skillful na siya on this unit of competency. So, move on to the next unit of competency na siya. Clear? Question on the comparison between progress and achievement chart. Wala? Sir, wala sir. Sir, sir yes. ang bata sa ibu tampil ka box sir. Kung bata, usually oh. ma'am, the 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 ratio for student and trainee, as trainer and trainee rather is one is to twenty five. Okay, according to our test the regulation. Um, one is to 25 lang judas siya. Yeah. Um, hindi na kasi effective pag if we go beyond 25 kasi as I've said, it's CBT or competency-based training. Mahihirapan ka na kapag nag-50 students ka na in one trainer, mahihirapan ka na i-monitor. Imagine sabay-sabay yan, sabay-sabay nag, for example, sa beauty care, uh, meron kang sampu dyan naga, naga nail polish, meron kang sampu naga hair spa, meron kang sampu dito naga foot spa, mahirapan ka na mag-monitor niyan. Tapos maingay pa talaga, magchikahan lang ang iba or mag-text-text lang ang iba. So the ideal ratio for trainer and trainee in CBT of TESDA is 1 is to 25. So sulat mo lang dito yung mga names ng, ng student. Thank you, Clear awesome. question? Thank you, Pastor. Sir Ken, yes, sorry. Uh, hindi kasi stable yung aking internet. So, medyo putol-putol yung uh, tawag nito. Yung, yung pagsasalita niyo po. Bali, kailan namin pwedeng ipasok ang achievement and the progress? Okay. Lahat ng portfolio na pinakita ko dito for supervised work-based learning, sabay-sabay niyo po yan isubmit. Ay, um, what I mean, sir, during the training, kailan namin pwede gamitin ang achievement Ah, okay, progress. kailan nyo gagamitin ang progress and achievement? As, as, as early as pag-start ng module, pag-start ng klase or ng training ng student mo, gagamitin mo na siya. So for example, uh, for example nag-start nag na ang class mo sa, sa, sa healthcare services NC2. So susulat mo naman yung name ng student mo dito based on the enrollment record ng school. Tapos, i-delegate mo na sila kung anong module. For example, si Abdukail, si Boko, at si Pingal. Okay, you can start with UC1. Uh, Aven, uh, for example, Avendanyo, Eggpit, and Pingal, you can start with UC2. So, pag once nag-start nag na yan sila, then you can easily mark it. You can write it in in marker or in pencil pen yung, yung, yung tarpaulin mo. Para at least, pag once na-complete nila each, each learning outcome, check mo na lang. Okay, question. Clear? Di, di ba sir, magamit lang naman ni kay sa FLS lang man sir? Ah, uh, yes, sa demonstration so, magamit. Sa demonstration. Ma, uh, magamit niyo ito siya sa demonstration but, but remember for your facilitate learning session na module, you don't have portfolio. Ang gagawin mo lang sa facilitate learning session is your demonstration and one of your props sa demonstration is etong progress chart. Okay, question. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, lastly, for your supervised work-based learning, you have your trainee's record book. So, itong trainee's record book naman, usually we give this, you, we give a copy of this to our student. Okay? So, um, usually, ang um, nilalagay natin dito, itong nasa gitna is your, the picture of your student, tapos, of course, the student number, tapos ang kanyang information and your name as the trainer. So, uh, in filling this out, of course, change mo lang itong header, change mo lang yung mga pangalan mo yan, tapos, uh, of course, itong unit of competencies, change mo din ito kasi hindi ka man, depende sa unit of competency mo. So, uh, for example, unit of competency mo is Uh, journalized transaction. So, sulat mo dyan, journalized transaction and of course, your learning outcome. Okay? Sulat mo dito yung learning outcome mo. And kung ano yung mga task requirement. For example, sa journalized transaction ni Sir Don, gusto niya, gawa, gusto niya ang, kanyang, ang kanyang task na i-require sa learning outcome number one is mag, makagawa ang student ng worksheet number one. Sa learning outcome number two, makagawa siya, makasubmit, makaperform siya ng worksheet number two on on accounting finance, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, yan yung task requirement niya. Pagbigay mo to sa student, nakablank itong date accomplishment. Nakablank ko. Kasi pag na-perform ng student yung, yung task na yun, papipilmahan niya sa iyo itong trainee's record book, ikaw na magsusulat ng date kung kailan niya na-accomplish, tapos kung ano yung remarks mo. Clear? 
Okay, sir. Thank you. Pag once na accomplish ito ng student, pag once na accomplish na papyumahan na to sa iyo ng student itong trainees record book, then that's the time i-update mo yung achievement chart mo kanina. Na okay, tapos na ito siya. Very good. Tapos move on to the next. Clear. Question. Okay. So, ganun siya. That's for our supervised work-based learning. So, lastly, papakita ko lang for those who haven't attended how to make a session, uh, how to make a shop layout. Ang shop layout naman is more on uh, we're going to draw. Ang usually ang ginagamit ginagamit lang natin dito is your paint. Under sa computer niyo, you have your paint application. So, ang gagawin mo lang 'yan siya, how to make your shop layout. You're going to navigate this one. So, drawing ka ng For example, draw, meaning i-draw mo yung classroom mo. So, i-draw mo yung classroom mo. For example, mag-drawing ka dyan. Drawing ako ng uh, door. Uh, drawing ako ng door sa classroom ko. Tapos, pwede, pwede ako mag-erase. You can use your erase na, na option. Uh, guys, you can practice this one after our live class para... Para once oh, when you are when you are going to make your ano your shop layout later on uh, marunong kayo how to use your paint tapos uh, you can also select you can use the select option pwede rin niyo yan i rotate okay so pwede niyo i rotate para at least ano uh, uh, hindi na kayo mahirapan tapos gawan gawan na kayo kung ano yung design ng classroom mo. Nandito ba yung table mo? Nandito ba yung mga library-library mo? Or mini-library mo? Nandito ba yung, or yung, ano to, yung whiteboard or blackboard mo? And etc. etc. Okay? So, ikaw na bahala mag-design yan kung anong setup ng classroom mo. But the most important here is dapat present ang 9 CBT components. Take down notes, please. We have 9 CBT components in TESDA. We have your practical work area. Dapat lahat meron ito sa training ha. Practical work area. You have your institutional assessment area. You have your um, quality control area. You also have your um, trainers area. You have your support area. You have your learning resource area you also have your contextual learning area you have your distance learning area and lastly you have your orientation or lecture area so guys please kapag tinanong kayo nito sa assessor ng assessor ninyo what are the nine cbt components Please, ito yung isasagot natin. So, we have your area. So, pag nag-drawing nag kayo, pag nagsulat kayo nitong, or kapag gumawa kayo ng shop layout ninyo, you're go, dapat, naka, dapat ano, um, itong lahat ng 9 CPT components present sa shop layout niyo. Plus, dapat present din sa shop layout ninyo yung lahat ng unit of competencies ng qualification mo or what we call so works so shop layout is your workstations for example sa beauty care you have your hand spa so dapat present din yung unit yung unit of competency on hand spa dito sa shop layout question sir can i have yes, a question sir. for regarding sa um practical work area and the institutional assessment as i observed kasi Sa ibang shop layout, nasa loob ang institutional assessment. Is it necessary ba nasa loob dapat ang institutional assessment sa practical work area? Uh, uh, yes. Ideally, ma'am, ideally, uh, separate yan siya. Se uh, actually, uh, actually, si practical work area at saka assessment area, dapat hindi na sila magkatabi. 
kasi mahirap naman kung remember your practical work area is pag-practice ng skill. Habang nagpa-practice ang bata or nag-acquire ng skill, si as institutional assessment mo parang examination area. So dapat ano, uh, dapat medyo malayo sila. It depends on your room now. It depends on your school kung gaano kalaki yung yung training facility mo. Now kung separate room ang assessment area mo, separate na siya layout ang gagawin mo particular for your particular for your assessment area. Clear? Clear, sir. And also, the learning resource area and the contextual learning Sige, area. Learning resource oh. area, parang mini library lang ito siya inside your room. So, mini library to the fact na nandun yung mga books and references. Ang kaibahan lang niya, si contextual learning, more on general sciences and general math. Si learning resource, yung mga modules.